Hey, Logan. Uh, you got to live at home for most of your junior career. What's this year been like living out on, you know, in Austin first and then right now with, with Wyatt and, and the Pavelskis? What's that like and who's the better driver? Uh, it's been a big change. Uh, I think I've grown up a lot this year. Um, like you said, being able to live at home, it's a lot different. Home cooked meals, sleeping in your own bed, and a lot of stuff's done for you. So, uh, this year I was kind of on my own, had to find my own apartment down in Austin and cook my own meals and, you know, uh, figure out my time management skills too. So uh, it was all part of it, but, uh, you know, I think it's made me a better person. I'm the better driver too. <laughs> we'll go a second row right to Ryan. Why you, your team has really flipped a switch in the second period, the last couple of games. What's it like? What do you notice when you guys go from on your heels to all of a sudden dictating the way you are? What's it like to be part of that? What do you notice in your game? Uh, yeah, it's great. I mean, we have that, you know, the patience, the confidence. Um, definitely haven't started, you know, like we, we want to. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I think we've done a really good job all year, and especially in these playoffs with, I mean, if we don't have a great period, we kind of, you know, take that intermission and kind of regain our thoughts and kind of settle down a bit and make sure we're, coming out strong in the next period. Um, I mean, you know, responses are so important in playoffs. And um, yeah, I mean, we're just, you know, I think, you know, our experience and, you know, all the guys who've played so many games kind of helps bring that, you know, patience to, um, you know, just get back to our game. Uh, third row on the left, Mark. Wyatt, I know there haven't been a lot of penalties to kill in this series, but you guys have done a really good job doing that. Um, what are you seeing from ice level that's working so well for you? Um, I mean, obviously you, you know, try to get to learn their tendencies, but, um, you know, with a team like yours, with all the, you know, great players they have on their power play, it's, you know, you just got to, you know, be able to have good reads, you know, react, um, you know, they're going to, they're going to make plays and it just kind of comes down to, you know, blocking shots, you know, Jakey's made some, some great saves, um, just kind of those kind of intangibles and in playoffs that kind of help you kill some big penalties, just, having those details and, um, you know, block shot or a huge save when needed. Fourth row on the left, Josh. Wyatt, I'm just you, you've been teammates with Jake for, for a couple of years now. I'm just wondering what stands out to you about his ability to reset and refocus. All the things bother him. I mean, it was a tough first eight minutes. I don't know, those, those goals weren't his fault, but still, like, you know, it's 2 nothing in a loud building, and then he just doesn't let in the next one. Uh, what stands out about, about his demeanor and how he goes about his business? Uh, he, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's a lot of, you know, it's awesome to be, playing in front of him. Um, yeah, I mean, his his response is, has always been so good. I mean, you know, we did not put him in a very good spot to start that game, and um, it could have been a lot worse for us if he didn't, you know, make some, some huge saves. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's our job to try to, you know, play our best in, in front of him. But, I mean, he's covered up a lot of our mistakes, and, I mean, he's just, you know, such a calming presence in it. Um, you know, it gives us a lot of confidence having him back there. And, yeah, I mean, he's, you know, he lets in one or two. And, you know, the game can get away from us pretty easily. But, you know, he, he stays strong and he makes some huge saves to, you know, keep us in the game. And then, then we're kind of able to, you know, kind of find our game back again at, once the second period starts. Back row on the left. Hey, Wyatt, can you bring us inside the room during that first intermission last night? What was said? Who's saying the message? And how much do you think that impacted the comeback? Uh, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, the leadership guys like Jamie Ben, um, Joe Felsky, just kind of the older guys that, you know, have been around. Um, I mean, we all, we all knew it wasn't a good period for us. And, um, you know, they it definitely, you know, felt like they were the hungry team. It definitely, you know, I'm sure it looked like that. Um, and, yeah, it was just, yeah, win battles and, and win races. I mean, that's so important this time of the year. You know, you can – have all those X's and O's, and um, none of that really matters if you're not, you know, winning puck battles, getting pucks back. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, the, the leadership guys in the room, and then obviously, you know, the coaching staff, Pete, um, you know, that was a, you know, big message from him. Back right, David. Hey, guys, it could be for either of you. Uh, you know, you guys were down two games to love. You go into Vegas, take those next two games. Colorado, you sweep all three games in a tough building there. It was super loud in the first period here last night. How has this team been able to just collect itself and be so calm and, you know, able to really play your best hockey on the road so far this postseason for either of you guys? Um, I think it just goes back to the leadership group. 
A um, lot of older guys in the team that have played in, in big games over their careers, and um, there just seems to be no panic in the room, no matter the score or you know how many games we're down in the series. Uh, I think everyone kind of looks to those guys, and you know when they're speaking, we listen and make sure that uh, we stick together. Take a couple more. Second row left, Leah. Uh, for either of you guys, you've got some teammates who have played in a hundred of these games before, but both of you, first and second year, are you able to enjoy this experience playing in a building like this, realizing you know, you're in the Western Conference Finals, or is it hard to do that in this time of year? Uh, I think a little bit of both. Um, you know, want to make sure you're focused on the game and uh, making sure you're in you know, a good spot to um, you know, play, put your best game forward, but I mean, it's hard not to just kind of soak it all in a little bit, you know, especially, you know, maybe during, you know, the, the anthem and stuff like that, and you're just kind of, you know, listening to the building, sing, you know, the Canadian anthem. And, um, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. It's, you know, I know it's what pretty much all of us dream, dream of growing up is playing in the Stanley Cup playoffs. And, um, I mean, yeah, it's, you know, try your best to, you know, soak it all in as much as you can. But at the same time, yeah, you want to be, you make sure you're, you're dialed in and not, uh, you know, not letting kind of all the, you know, distractions get to you. Last one, third row on the right, Eric. Uh, Logan, you joined the team later in the season. You, were you at all surprised by just how calm and composed this team always seems to be, no matter how much adversity you're facing in a game or in any series? Yeah, it's a good thing to have, for sure. Um, I've been able to learn lots from those guys and just see what makes them such good players and, um, I think it's nice just to have those guys to look up to and kind of lead the way for us. So, um, yeah, it's not easy kind of coming up uh, later in the year. And uh, I just wanted to try and do my thing and fit in. And, and those guys have made me really feel a part of the team. Is it impressive just, I mean, he was just in junior hockey last year. And, yeah. uh, you know, now he's in the Western Conference Final and seems to be handling everything very well. Yeah, crazy impressive. Uh, I mean, both those kids. You know, like I said, I think this is my 16th year in the league, and you know, I, I haven't, uh, I don't remember one young guy that age making the impact. You know, both these guys have have made at this time of year, and, and you know, I'm stressing this time of year. It's one thing to jump into the regular season with 32 teams, and you know, um, the level of play, but, but you're jumping into you know some some rare air here these are the these are the best teams left standing there's there's no room there's no time there's no weaknesses you know really in any of these groups that are left and and you know i, I would put vegas and colorado in that category too the two teams we just went through and but both kids have been you know effective every night and not just on the scoreboard like you know all kinds of detail and and defensive conscience to their game you know they just play the right way third row on the right Eric it takes you a lot of years in this league to understand the importance of uh, being calm in the face of adversity or is it, does it take a special group like this one to be able to be calm yeah in the I think it, it's a good question I think it's a little bit of both I think I think for sure experience teaches you that um, and there's no doubt about that and uh and also your leadership group, you know, really, you know, allows you to do that uh, if you've got a good group because you know that, that that's being handled. The right messaging is being done and it's being done by, by the important guys in the room, you know, the more important guys than even the coach. And uh, so that, that allows you to do that. Back right. Hey, Pete, uh, just a question about Jake Ottinger and his ability, no matter the score or situation, to find a way to reset and be able to get to his best hockey yeah. to help the team find their footing and get to their best hockey. Yeah, yeah, really unflappable. Um, and that's, that's really been, you know, probably the most impressive part for me has been his response um, at key times, last year's playoffs, this year's playoffs, either to our team being off for a night or, you know, him being a little bit off, um, 
the response has always been immediate and it's always been world class. Uh, and, I, and I think, you know, for me, that, that's a sign of, of, of greatness at that position because the, the guys that allow, you know, one bad game to bleed into multiple bad games, you're, you're sitting at home this time of year if that happens. Second row on the left, Leah. Hey, Leo. Pete. Uh, I believe both Sam Steele and Alexander Petrovic are from right around this yeah. area. What is that moment like when a player, especially in the playoffs, gets to come home and yeah. play in front of their home crowd? Well, it's really special. And, you know, I think um, especially for Petrovic, and I'm not going to say it's less special for Sam Steele. I think it's really special for Sam. Uh, and, and, you know, he deserves it. He's had a great year for us. And, and uh, um, But for Petrovic, who, you know, probably didn't see this coming, you know, had spent the entire year in the American League, has been a, a you know, a veteran guy that probably thought uh, that his window had closed. Um, you know, and all of a sudden you're playing in the conference finals and you're playing in your hometown. You know, I, I don't think it gets better than that. You know, and, and he's at a point in his career where I'm sure he appreciates it a lot more than when he was 22 or 23. Third row on the left, Mark. Pete, you, you mentioned six. Uh, you've had a lot of jobs. What do, you, what do you? How do you evolve as a coach from job to job? With you from job to yeah. job. Well, there's there's always things there's always things you learn. Um, you know both about the groups you're, you're coaching with, but I, I think also the coaches that you coach with and the different stops. You know, I was very fortunate uh, in Florida when I came into the league, I, there was a veteran, Mike Kitchen, that, that was a holdover from the previous staff that was invaluable for me coming in. And then my second job, I inherited Larry Robinson and Adam Oates, uh, who Lou had kept, um, you know, and on and on. I mean, you know, I, I think... Every staff you work with, you uh, you get better as a coach. You know, being around people like that, and uh, you know, I've got a long list of guys I've worked with, and that doesn't even include the Hockey Canada experiences, World Championships. You know, working with Ken Hitchcock and Dave Tippett and Craig McTavish. Uh, you know, so just uh, I think that's probably the biggest thing is is, is being around different people, different ideas, and taking the things that uh, you like and, and making them your own. Fourth row on the right, Elliot. Elliot. Hey, hey Peter, um, just a little bit more on Ottinger. Did you ever worry about him this year? And when did you, what point of the season did you say he's back what we expect? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd be lying to, to you if I said I didn't, there wasn't some concern at, at one point in the year. Um, I'm trying to remember when. Uh, you know, he, he, he had got himself in a little bit of a funk and, and he's such a mature, unflappable kid. You know, you, know I, you saw a little bit of vulnerability, not, not much, but a little bit. Um, but I, I always took comfort in knowing, you know, that he had a foundation there that he could rely on, that his, his character is, is second to none, his leadership second to none, that he was gonna, he was gonna get back there. But, you know, I, I think in his words, it, it was probably the toughest point in his career at one point this year, you know, battling through some things. So, um, you know, but full marks, he, uh, he, uh, he never changed his attitude and kept working. And, you know, there was, an inner, there was always an inner confidence within him, despite a little, being a little vulnerable, that, that he would get it back. And, you know, that, that gave me comfort. Second row on the right, Andrew. Peter Vander Kane was asked earlier about kind of the lack of scrums uh, in this series, and he said that was a strategy of, of lulling that, that you and your team would do, both to avoid penalties and yeah. keep the temperature a little low. Just wonder your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're not playing any different than we have all year, and, and the standard of the refereeing is the same as we've had all year. You know, we're, we're the least or second least penalized team over an 82-game schedule with 32 teams in the league and the least penalized in the playoffs. So, you know, that's not our game. We, we, we play hard, we play heavy, we defend hard, um, but we play whistle to whistle, and, you know, that's what we're continuing to do. 
We'll take two more. Center left, Sean. Sean. Hey, Pete. Uh, given your team going to the Western Conference Final last year and your first year with them and coming back here now, I wonder if there's growth that stands out to you between that yeah. point last year and now. Uh, for sure there's growth. I mean, we're a better team than we were last year in the, West, in the Western Conference Final. We're a deeper team, you know, and that's Jim Nill going out in the summer and, and signing depth and going at the trade deadline and adding guys. Um, you know, so I, I think I mentioned this in the Vegas series. I felt, I felt last year in the Western Conference Finals when we got to this point, we were kind of hoping that everything lined up and we could win. You know, I feel like this year we, we feel like we should win. Last one, Leah. Hey, Leah. hey Pete. Uh, yesterday, Jason Robertson said that third goal that he scored was something he learned from Jeff Reese. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to get your thoughts on your yeah. goalie coach teaching your goal scorers some things. Yeah, yeah Reese does a lot of a lot of work behind the scenes with those guys. Uh, you know, just on on tendencies and scouting reports and things and and. Um, you know, Robo, Matt Duchesne in particular are two guys that that spend a lot of time, you know, kind of looking at uh, at those reports and, and, and spending time with Jeff. So, um, yeah, those, uh, uh, they, they talk the same language, um, you know, and, uh, and I think Robo's a very analytical player, you know, as far as his, his scoring goes, and uh, he sees the game differently than than most people, including myself. So it's been a good match. Thanks a lot, Pete. Right, thank you.